Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, main event of the night. Two season vets, Derek D. Rock Prince versus Hayward Charles. Hey, we're taking this fight on short week's notice, uh, on, on short notice. Welcome back, well, Dynamite. Matt, this is what it's all about. The names on the marquee, the main event. It is go time right now. This is what we've all been waiting for. Two seasoned professionals, both with 10 losses, 17 wins for Hayward, 22 for D-Rock. And here we go, first of three five-minute rounds between these two middleweight warriors. Hayward Charles coming out with an oblique kick, trying to probe Derek and keep him at distance, keep him guessing. So far, D-Rock owning the center of the cage, got Hayward circling on the outside. Oblique kick again. Let's keep an eye on that, see if maybe Hayward's trying to set something up. Yeah, you don't see a whole lot of emphasis behind it, but I'm like you, I think he's trying to set up for a combination later, trying to get Derek Krantz to bring the gaze down lower. You know what it does? It makes it hard to move forward, you know? Uh, jamming that kick into, into somebody's oblique again and again and again, it's makes it difficult, makes you, makes you uh, second guess moving forward. And I guess caught at the right angle with somebody coming in, you could really damage the knee and end the fight. Oh, it could certainly hurt. Derek Krantz, a uh, well-known guy around these parts, been around for a long time, doing it at a high level. Yeah, 32 professional fights, that is outstanding. Started when he was 18 years old, been at the game for quite some time. You can see, we talked about their reach earlier with some of our fights. Hey, we're quite a bit taller than D-Rock. Got about two, maybe three inches on him, so you got to figure he's got a little bit of a height advantage as far as the length on the arms and the legs as well. Neither of these guys are natural 185ers. I believe they both fight at welterweight, but short notice uh, decision made them both fight at uh, 85 instead. Derek Krantz getting a little sloppy, not setting up his kick there. Yeah, Hayward able to reach out and grab that foot and send him flying. D-Rock quick with the scramble to get back on his feet. You see Hayward working with one underhook, trying to get his other. D-Rock protecting that knee, doesn't want to take that knee shot to the abdomen. And again, separation between the two fighters. They're going to start back up, square up. D-Rock with the big right hand. Hayward ducks under, good head movement. Derek swinging hammers. Yeah, Krantz trying to push the action. Hayward backing up. Not answering anything, though. He's backing up, avoiding the punches, but not answering anything of his own. Seems like Hayward, Hayward and Derek are talking in there. I'm curious as to what they're saying to each other. I've never been one to talk during a fist fight myself. Well, exactly. At some point in time, you've got to let your actions speak instead of your words. And I think the time for words was done before the cage door closed. From what I understand, though, these guys are quite familiar with each other, fought before and, and grappled against each other. So, again, with the oblique kick. Yeah, D-Rock, I think it's just enough to keep him aware of that, to keep a little bit of distance for Hayward. And now D-Rock's got that in the back of his mind, that, yeah, he could be setting something up. Such a seasoned fighter like yourself, I'm sure he sees it as and, well. And to be honest, it's not a bad idea. Even if he's not setting something up, he's keeping his range with it. And what's at risk with Derek? Derek's going to hit you with that big looping overhand right. So best thing to do is keep him at bay with some long kick. Working the clinch up against the fence is D-Rock right now. You see the leg come up to protect that knee. Double taking his Muay Thai style knees. So uh, Charles holding that down. D-Rock really laying the pressure on him now. Got the forearm across the face. One single underhook on the left side of Charles. This is an interesting matchup to me. Derek uh, typically has the advantage on the mat and is trying to drag his opponents down. But I think they know that Hayward Charles is uh, well versed uh, with, with submissions and, and grappling. and. Looks like more of the game plan is to stay on the feet and see what happens. But I tell you, we haven't seen much more than the oblique kick out of Charles so far. He hadn't showed as much offense. There's a big overhand right. Nice deep kick, creating distance, side kick as well. And now you see Charles backing up again, circling around. D-Rock owning the center of the cage. Forcing Charles to circle around. I think Hayward's doing his best to conserve his energy, knowing that he took this fight on short notice. It doesn't seem like he's really trying to. There's Derek, lands a blow there. Charles felt that one. They yeah, gotta make sure he's, he You can see start. the facial expression on Hayward Charles turned after he took that first big hit. A little more serious out of him now. They're doing a good job of controlling the range, just sliding right out of the way of the punches just enough. I tell you, I don't like the fact that Charles keeps dropping those hands. You can see his mouth open a lot more, a lot more mouth breathing going on. 
And you've got to think with a seasoned fighter like Derek, he's going to see those signs and capitalize like a shark smelling blood in the water. I don't know if I want to be giving those signals to my opponent right now. Nice short elbow inside the clinch. Derek uh, doing some good work here. Like to see a little dirty boxing at this point could really help Grants out. And they separate out of the clinch. Going back to the center of the cage. There's our 10-second clapper. We're just about done with the first round. Oh, we. Wild roundhouse kick, but I think Charles knew he wasn't in range, wasn't going to land that. Maybe just something to more show what he can do. Interesting first round between these guys. High level stuff. I, I think, uh, like you said, a lot of fights between these guys. You can see that they've uh, they've worked all avenues of this thing. Yeah, kind of a feeling out process in the first round. See who's got what, who's going to come where, what the game plan is. I think maybe we'll see more action out of these two here in the second round. I don't think it's a, you know, I think it's a pretty decent idea by, by Hayward. But if he's the better grappler, perhaps he needs to close the distance and score a takedown of his own because I don't think he's getting the better of these stand-up exchanges. And though the oblique kick's keeping Derek at, at bay and keeping him from hitting him with an H-bomb, still, you got you to gotta make something happen if you expect to win this fight. Exactly. I said, we haven't seen much more than that. And when they do get in the clinch in close range, I agree. D-Rock definitely landing the more powerful punches. He is the aggressor. I think Charles happy to try to keep that distance, maybe wait for Derek to make a mistake on one of those big haymaker punches. Both guys looking reasonably fresh going into the second round. So here we go, round number two of three, right of passage five, big main event coming your way now. Derek D-Rock Krantz against Hayward, the hybrid Charles. And here comes Krantz, going to push it a little more, a little sooner this round, back to the center of the cage. Derek started that uh, combination with a feint, and I think he needs more of that. Maybe feint to get that oblique kick extended, and then, and then as he's bringing it back, close the distance with a big right hand. I'm not sure if he even meant to feint, but he certainly did. Whether he meant it to or not, it worked for him. Got inside, landed a good blow. Charles, I think he's going to make a mistake and get caught with some of those high looping, slow kicks. He needs to be a little more careful with those. Changes levels right when he needs to. Scores on Derek. Be interesting to see what happens here. Now you see, like you see, talked about earlier, one of our fights, keeping the pressure on with the head on the chest of D-Rock. Hey, with Charles doing a good job of, of crushing Derek's butterfly hooks here, keeping them close to his glutes so that he can't extend them and create space, which is what Derek's trying to do right now. It's a good defense that time by the hybrid. Now he's looking for that front chancery. Let's it go, looking for the Muay Thai style knees. D-Rock's going to snatch that leg. He's got a shot at a double leg here. Look at the sprawl work so far by the hybrid. Hayward Charles stuffing that takedown. Nice work by Derek working through that. Uh, looks like Hayward's got a pretty nasty guillotine. He keeps on going for it. And Derek got to pay attention here. Hand fight, stay on top. And as you as a fighter and myself as a fan, we know in that position you want to keep the posterior in the air to alleviate as much pressure off the neck as you can. Absolutely. He's out of that now. Derek working side control. If he can get the one leg free. Not in a good position for him with Hayward up against the cage. Going to make it a little tougher. When we're in these close quarters, for me, this is a good position to plant our hand and kind of slide into an elbow rather than wind them up because they tend to miss. But if I plant my hand right on his face, I can just slip it right into an elbow. Makes it very difficult for the shot not to land. You're absolutely right. And at this point, you know, you've got, you got the sweat starting to come out pretty profusely, so that slide will work really good. As Derek postures up to, to create an opportunity for the elbow, Kay, uh, Hayward's just moving out of the way. So that's why it works best to plant your hand and, and let that elbow kind of chip away at him. And here the fans starting to get behind Derek. We hear the chance of D-Rock echoing through the River Dome here at the Horseshoe. Krantz with a couple shots to the rib cage there. As long as I've been watching fights at the River Dome, I've been hearing that D-Rock champ in this River Dome. So. He is a popular young man in this area for sure. And right now really working over Hayward Charles. Charles doing everything he can just to keep any of the big shots coming through. Trying to protect the knockout blow, but he's eating some of the smaller shots to the kidney area there. Couple elbows coming in. And all this time, you know Charles expending so much energy trying to escape from underneath, and he's got the weight of Derek Krantz laying down on top of him, making it hard to breathe, making him uncomfortable. Back to that pressure you were talking about earlier. He's doing a good job of keeping Hayward's hips centered as well. He's not letting him move off to one side or the other. 
this is a very controlling position. You know, the, the guard works for you, but as, as long as you're working the guard, if not, a guy like Derek Krantz, he's made a living from this position. You see Charles trying to use the cage, maybe help him escape, and Krantz makes him pay for it with two shots right to the face. And now still Charles trying to find a way to get loose, and Krantz just not giving it to him. Derek needs to... He needs to react as he lands a hard shot. Casey uh, Hayward's guard opens up. Now is the time to posture up and pass. Though in this position, he's landing solid shots. But why stay inside Hayward's guard where it's dangerous? Grant's going for the finish. Charles just covering up. Looks like Charles wants out of there. Oh, big right, up kick. There's that up kick. You got to watch it. He might jump into a triangle here. Be careful. Grant's away from that, going to work for side control here, and he's going to get it. Charles coming around again, trying to get those legs wrapped around the body of D-Rock, trying to pull him down and keep him from posturing up. Now Charles is going to shrimp up, try to protect the head. Referee McCandless isn't going to let that go on too long. He's going to have to answer some of these. And D-Rock happy to just keep landing those blows, dropping the hammers. I don't believe this is intelligently in defending yourself. And there's the call right there. Gonna get the win is Derek D. Rock Krantz. He'll take the win in our big main event here at Rite of Passage 5. Danger as always, it is a pleasure, my man. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go in there and do what I do inside the cage. Great job, Dynamite. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee has called a stoppage to the action at four minutes, 47 seconds in round number two, declaring your winner, Derek D. Rose.